coming up, how vegan blood destroys cancer, how powerful blood can be, and how old rich white people are going to start farming young vegans for their blood. It's vegan. Cheers. Now normally we don't really think that someone's blood is going to be better than another person's blood, that your blood might be better than my blood, but what happens when you take vegan blood and you pour it on cancer cells in a petri dish is pretty remarkable. When you look at prostate cancer, for example, the most common cancer in men, you find that vegan blood kills 13 times as much cancer as normal blood, as average blood. And when you look at breast cancer, which is the most common cancer for women, you find that it can actually slow the growth of that cancer by about eight times. To emphasize how ridiculously fast acting and easy this is, they took women and put them on a whole food plant-based diet or vegan diet for just two weeks and here's what their blood did to breast cancer. The top row here is literally pictures of cancer getting blasted, they're dying. The bottom row is essentially hot spots of cancer getting killed. These are three different strains of breast cancer with the black bars representing the starting point of how many cells were dying. And then two weeks later out on a vegan diet, the striped bars showing how many more cells were killed. To look a little bit deeper into just how powerful blood can be, let's look at some research that some Harvard people did. They found that if you take blood from a mouse that's equivalent to a 20 year old human and you put it into a mouse that's equivalent to a 70 year old human, you get a ton of crazy effects. For example, if you put them on a treadmill, the older one becomes as fast as the younger one. Other researchers have found that if you give older mice younger mice blood, they also improve cognitive function and brain plasticity, their heart becomes younger, their muscles recover faster, their blood vessels recover faster, basically they become young again. So in looking at what actually causes these cancers, there are a ton of different cancers and a ton of different mechanisms that different animal products cause different cancers and things like that. And I'll get that into that in the future. But right now, I'll just explain breast cancer. Breast cancer is undisputedly largely created by estrogen and excess estrogen and just imbalance with that. And so if you're looking at dairy, for example, the way we treat our cows now, the, preg the cows are pregnant for 10 months out of the year. When they're pregnant, their levels of estrogen are like 10 times higher than normal. And so the estrogen levels of our cows, for example, are 10 times higher than that of like a Mongolian cow, which is only pregnant like five or six months out of the year. So that's huge. And because of that, we have 150 times more estrogen in milk than we do in just like ambient water. Then looking at meat, um, beef is basically injected with estrogen as a steroid to increase growth. It increases growth by 10 to 30%. And this is in 97% of beef as of 1999. And so people think they're eating super humane, but chances are they're getting, they're getting this stuff. Just to back that up with the study, uh, Harvard Medical School did a study of 90,000 women for 12 years and found that women that ate red meat were twice as likely to get breast cancer. So that's a huge real world study that they did. So what's the takeaway from this? We can either give people that aren't vegan, vegan blood somehow and make them cure disease. I mean, we got a lot of people in prison, we could just feed them vegan food and then create a blood farm that we then sell the blood to people that are sick, they eat really badly, and then they can cure their cancer. Or there's an easier way. If you just eat a whole food plant-based vegan diet, then your blood is gonna do what this blood does.